The Internet holds a wealth of information, ideas, and communication tools that are essential for teaching and learning. However, because of the anonymity provided by the web, it is a host to many different potential risks for both students and teachers. These risks include dangerous people, dangerous programs, and dangerous situations. Although there is a need to protect students from these Internet dangers, it would be a shame to simply deprive students of Internet access altogether, for there is far too much to be gained by its use. However, it is important to be aware of the risks, how to minimize those risks, and how to respond to them if they should occur. Staying informed is the biggest key to Internet safety. Internet risks take several different forms. Some risks include cyberstalking, Internet predators, and child exploitation. Other risks involve identity and credential theft, fraud, and hacking. Some risks take the form of viruses and computer bugs. Because of potential risks, it is important to keep safety in mind when using the Internet. See if you can answer the following question about safety. Click the Show Correct Answers button to see if you are right. Child exploitation is a rapidly growing crime on the Internet. It includes using misleading domain names to trick a child into accessing inappropriate sites, sending unsolicited obscene materials to a child via email, enticing a child online to participate in sexual acts, soliciting child prostitution, and distributing child pornography. All of these offenses are prohibited and punishable by law. Internet predators are a big part of the child exploitation problem. Internet predators are adult criminals, such as child molesters, who seek out children in chat rooms or other online forums. The predators try to befriend a child and then convince the child to meet with them in person. This attempt to lure a child into a physical meeting is referred to as cyber luring. Cyber stalking is a term that has been applied to a form of stalking that takes place electronically, mostly via the web. Cyber stalkers use email, chat rooms, or other electronic communication to harass or threaten individuals repeatedly. Cyber stalking is meant to frighten children into meeting with a predator in an offline setting. There are basic guidelines that you can follow to keep child exploitation, internet predators, and cyber stalkers away from yourself and your students. Stay informed of the risks, the laws, and preventative guidelines and keep your students informed as well. If you suspect that there are predators, exploiters, or cyber stalkers threatening you or your students, report it immediately to the police and to any of the websites listed. Save any documentation you might have received from a potentially threatening individual. There are several ways you can involve your students in preventative safety measures. Talk to them about safety, strangers, and risks. Many websites offer safety information for students in the form of games, quizzes, and activities, all of which are age-specific. Some websites also offer safety pledges for students, parents, and teachers to sign and pledge to observe safety standards. Let's take a moment to review what we've covered so far. Answer the following question about Internet risks and safety. A different kind of danger found on the Internet is identity or credential theft, which can result from online fraud or hacking. Identity theft is when your personal information, such as your social security number, name, address, birth date, or any other identifying information, is stolen and used in fraudulent ways. Credential theft is when your credit card information, loan information, credit report information, or banking information is stolen and used in criminal ways. Online fraud is one of the ways in which your identity or credit information can be stolen. The anonymity of the Internet makes it easy to commit fraud, 
and people are often not who they say they are. Online fraud can come in a variety of scenarios. If you are asked to donate money to a foreign or unknown organization, offered a once-in-a-lifetime investment opportunity, or have won a big prize redeemable once you give out credit card information, chances are good that it's a fraudulent scheme. Students can help avoid identity and credential fraud, too. Students should never give out personal information online. Help them remember that they do not have to give out personal information to play games or access websites. Also, be sure that they understand not to shop online without adult supervision and parental permission. A second way that your identity or credit can be stolen is by hackers. Hacking is the unauthorized use of computer and network resources for the intent of criminal activities. Hackers use programming codes from their own computer to break into your computer, much like a thief would break into your house, but hackers steal information about you from your computer. Another risk that you and your students should be wary of when using the Internet is viruses. A virus is a program that can get into your computer through email, websites, or chat rooms. Once it is inside your computer, it can slow down your system, create annoying pop-ups, or disable your computer altogether. It is important to save your computer files through a backup system such as a CD-ROM or USB flash drive in case a virus erases your computer. The Internet should not be thought of as a scary, threatening place that is always unsafe for children. Rather, it is a wonderful way to learn and interact with people from all over the world. Just remember that there are some serious risks that can threaten students and teachers, such as predators, hackers, and viruses. Always stay informed of how to protect yourself and your students so that time spent on the Internet is fun and educational. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in a classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid.